Christmas fruit. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was, is, and is to come. This is what you seek to remember. So you gaze at him. Spirit helps. He tenderizes you with an increasing grasp of this love, giving you more his heart of flesh, ultimately pierced for you, instead of your current heart of stone. And as he accomplishes this supernatural work in you day by day, you progress. You are able to love more. Not just him, but also the ones near to you. The ones in your midst where he calls you to see, serve, and value one another. Not your love pouring through or your attempts to love, but now being ever more in him, rooted and grounded by the truth from his spirit, you do become like the tree in Psalm 1 on the riverbank, with your roots thrust down into the water which is the Spirit, so you can always, in all seasons, bear his fruit, which is supernatural, as sustenance to others. The fruit of love, what they need as they need it. The same food you crave and which he seeks to provide to you as well. Love, joy, peace, kindness, goodness, gentleness faithfulness, and self-control, all from gazing at his adorable face, remembering how the birth really was, and the life, and then the cross, where he staked it all for true love, unto resurrection, ascension, and spirit coming, poured out and available for all of us, contemplating him, letting spirit form you in the process so he can take you higher into this awareness, so you become fountains of love, where others gain a drink of him because he is flowing through. That place of being in him, your source, is what enables him to flow out through you to accomplish his work in more hearts his way, for his kingdom. This does not stop. Joy beyond Christmas joy and peace. Peace every day. So seen in this light, it is not really a great co-mission assignment. We are not his equals. We are his vessels, which we can only be by constantly seeking to be in him. And along the way, to keep seeking like wise men gazing at his majesty, reflecting him as the moon and the stars until his light has fully come. When he comes again, the veil is forever gone, and we see him face to face. Onward, Prayer. Holy, holy, holy Lord, you are God of heaven and earth, and there is this place to which I come, where there's nothing left but you. You are the only one upon whom I can rely, where every lesser goal has disintegrated as dust, so the only way I can look at life, the only view that I have, is yours. Of course, I cannot gain or stay in this view on my own. But there your spirit is so graciously helping me. Empty, emptied, and becoming emptied more. There are those days when there is and will be nothing to hang on to here. Nothing which gives me a sense of stability or certain care. These places which in the past have been my undoing, now are no longer unexpected. And with your help, gradually I can thank you for these. Yes. Thank you, for then it is clear once again that all to which I clung was but sand, but mist. You are the rock. You are the sustaining river. You are always there. Like Jesus, you work through all things, and your purposes cannot be thwarted. You are calling to each one, and yes, still to me, to come closer. And in that place, there is more healing, more awe more wonder, and the possibility of becoming yet more a bed for your holy life force, the spirit of life, the spirit of love. Scripture John 3, verses 16 through 17 
For God so greatly loved and dearly prized the world that he even gave up his only begotten unique Son so that whoever believes in, trusts in, clings to, relies on him shall not perish, come to destruction, be lost, but have everlasting life. For God did not send the Son into the world in order to judge, to reject, to condemn, to pass sentence on the world, but that the world might find salvation and be made safe and sound through him. Revelation chapter 4, verses 1 through 3. After this I looked, and behold, a door standing open in heaven. And the first voice which I had heard addressing me like the calling of a war trumpet said, Come up here, and I will show you what must take place in the future. At once I came under the Holy Spirit's power, and behold, a throne stood in heaven with one seated on the throne. And he who sat there appeared like the crystalline brightness of jasper and the fiery sardius, and encircling the throne there was a halo that looked like a rainbow of emerald. Revelation chapter 21, verses 1 through 7. Then I saw a new sky, a heaven, and a new earth, for the former sky and the former earth had passed away, vanished, and there no longer existed any sea. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God, all arrayed like a bride, beautified and adorned for her husband. Then I heard a mighty voice from the throne, and I perceived its distinct words saying, See, the abode of God is with men, and he will live and camp tent among them and they shall be his people, and God shall personally be with them and be their God. God will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be anguish, sorrow, and mourning, nor grief, nor pain any more, for the old conditions and the former order of things have passed away. And he who is seated on the throne said, See, I make all things new. And he said, Also, Record this, for these sayings are faithful, accurate, incorruptible, and trustworthy, and true, genuine. And he further said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty, I myself will give water without price from the fountain, the springs of the water of life. He who is victorious shall inherit all these things, and I will be God to him, and he shall be my son. Revelation 4, verse 11. Worthy are you, our Lord and God, to receive the glory and the honor and dominion, for you created all things. By your will they were brought into being and were created. <laughs>